Hey everybody, Gib Arnold here, hope you're doing well. So usually I like to stay behind the cameras, but because today's video is on track IOR, well, really that wasn't possible uh, for obvious reasons with this mug, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, so today's video, as I say, is on track IOR. And what is it? Well, you may be familiar with it. You might have seen Murph use it actually, as well as other streamers as well. But usually it consists of a camera that goes on top of your monitor and that connects to something in order to track your head movements. It could be a clip or it could be even little antenna, antennas that come out. It looks like, a, it looks like that, at least to me, um, that track your movements uh, from the camera. And what that gives you then is immersive experience, really. So you're able to look quick at an instrument, you're able to look at a dial, you're able to quickly look out the window to see oncoming traffic, etc. Rather than having to worry about changing camera position or having a binding on your HOTAS or your keyboard and um, to have that very look or view that you that you need at that time, it's just much easier to naturally look the way you want to see. And the problem with track hours, and they seem great, is that, well, from doing a quick Google search, what you'll find is, well, they kind of range in price and can start for anywhere around the $150 mark, right the way up to this site, which seems to have them for over 200 euros. So not cheap. The other problem as well, of course, is that they seem to be out of stock at the moment, having, again, just quickly looked at Amazon. So for me, personally speaking, they seem great. However, well, the problem is, well, I'm not sure I'd use it each time uh, that I would flight sim, and, and that's a bit of a waste. Um, so I don't know if every circumstance I would really want to have that turned on, in, in my opinion. The second, of course, is the price, even if they were in stock, $100 you know, dollars up to 200 or so. It's a lot of an outlay. Um, and again, I'm just not sure if I could justify it, particularly if I don't use it all the time. And then thirdly is I frankly don't want any more stuff. Um, it's getting a bit crowded and um, it's getting harder to cut off the delivery guy and explain why you've got stuff. Oh, those rudder pedals have always been there. Um, so again, I just don't know if I want yet more stuff and more equipment. Um, it's already cluttered enough. So, why are we here then? What's this video about? Well, they say uh, pictures speak a thousand words, so let's jump into the sim and let me show you. So here I am in the sim, I jump into the cockpit, and I'm just going to do this, check this out. I have got head tracking, so I can actually look around, my left, right, up, it's good. Down, you can see the carpet. I can go into instruments, have a good look, really naturally. Look behind me, looking good back there. Bit, bit dirty in the carpet, it's a bit of a clean. And you'll notice that I don't have any camera or anything connected to my cap. And then I'll just choose the binding again to turn it off. And then I'm back to the way it was before. So how did I do it? Well, did you spot it? <laughs> There's an app for that. So let's jump over to the screens and I can take you through it. The name of the app is Smooth Track. And you can get more information at smoothtrack.app. It's available for Android and iOS at a cost of $9.99 or €9.99. The smartphone app is part of what's needed. The other part is the desktop application. As you scroll down through this website, the developer has listed some detailed setup tutorials and instructions for what to do to get it up and running. The desktop application is a free application called OpenTrack. Again, the link for it is here. Scrolling down through it, there's a setup axi. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. The main thing to know is that you do need to enable a rule through your firewall, potentially, to get it working. It's the OpenTrack app to get that working. And then other than that, you need your computer's IP address and then use the port that the developer lists here as well. Usually it's 4242. Here's the OpenTrack app installed. Clicking Options, 
Here's where you can do your bindings to either your HOTAS or your keyboard. I suggest having one for centering your view, which is always helpful, particularly if you get lost or in an unusual situation, it's good just to be able to recenter. And I have one as well to for toggling the tracking to enable it or disable it. As per the detailed setup instructions from the developer, my input is UDP over network, my output is FreeTrack 2.0 enhanced, filter is Excella, and that is pretty much it for the OpenTrack app on my desktop. Moving over to my smartphone, I happen to be using an iPhone in this case. If I open the SmoothTrack app and I go to settings, I pop in the IP address of my desktop and the port of 4242 that the developer has given me, and I tap on start. So here I am, hello, and I'll tap on start on the desktop as well. Now as I move my head, you can see the little octopus's head moving left and right, up and down. Don't worry by the way that it says no video, what that's talking about is a camera feed, a camera capture feed. We're not capturing camera, we're capturing data on the OpenTrack app on my desktop. And that's it working. Out of the box, it's been pretty good for me. I haven't had to mess with things too much at all or tweak things too much at all, but there are settings here to adjust the sensitivity and offset that you can do in the app or even the yaw, pitch, control, etc. and really play with your heart's content. The only other thing to let you know about is in the bottom right, there's a little light bulb. If you tap that, it turns the display off on your smartphone so that you're not wasting battery power. And that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks for your time and watching. Until the next one, take care. Bye.